I always told myself that if I were to do a JoJo Series 4, I would base it on Steel Ball Run and Jojolian. However, when I found out Disney 100 had 18 minifigures, that opened up a whole lot of new possibilities. That means that now I can add JoJo Lands into the mix. So, here we are, JoJo Series 4, based on parts 7, 8, and 9. Now, before I begin, I do have a disclaimer. The colours of all of these figures are based on the Shueisha um, coloured manga, so I don't have an anime to base these on. And since Jojo Lands isn't even coloured yet, all of the colours I either had to make up or just pull from the covers from Ultra Jump. So basically these two pictures were uh, basically what I based all the colours off. Anyway, uh, without further ado, let's get into it. To kick things off, we have Johnny Joestar. Now, he's basically the same as the one from the April Fool's video I did a few years back. Except now, um, I've actually read the manga, so I actually know the context of some of these things. So, he has a wheelchair for an accessory, alongside Tusk Act 1, which would have a brand new head mold, and the Arm of the Saints Corpse. Now, for throughout all the Steel Ball Run figures, I did, um, add like a piece of the Saints Corpse, but I'm not gonna list it, because, I mean, you have eyes, you can see. As for the figure itself, he's almost identical to the one from the April Fool's video, except um, I made his outfit a little bit lighter to reflect the marker a little bit better. Next up we have Gyro Zappelli, and he's basically identical to the April Fool's one, except um, I got rid of Ball Breaker because it's kind of a spoiler. Anyway, for accessories he has a steel ball and the head of the Saint's corpse. Next up we have Lucy Steel, she's relatively simple, she has a skirt piece and mid legs in um, the light nougat colour. And for accessories, she has the torso of the Saint's Corpse and also um, a blade which represents a ticket to ride. The next minifigure in the series is Hot Pants, and uh, I'm not really too happy with how she came out, but oh well. Anyway, her accessories are just another arm and also two spray cans of her stand, Cream Starter, which is a pretty odd name. She also does have a new um, here hat combo piece. Next up we have Diego Brando, and I know that I'm not really talking about new pieces that much, but I mean, I'm only not bringing them up because I um, keep forgetting that, uh, yeah, the April Fool's video one, I already kind of introduced him there. Anyway, he's literally identical to the one from that April Fool's video, except I replaced one of the dinosaurs with, um, that League of the Saints Corps, and I'm still really happy with him, he's still one of my favourites of the series. Next up, and the final one for Steel Ball Run, Funny Valentine. He's also identical to the April Fool's one. His accessories are the leg of the Saint's Corpse, an American flag which he can use to activate D4C, and speaking of D4C, he also has the fist pieces, which I actually haven't really used a lot in this series, mainly because in the alternate continuity they shift less on humanoid stands, so yeah. Kicking off into part 8, aka Jojolian, we have Gappy. Now, the thing with Gappy is, um, the torso, I couldn't find any torso that I liked on Megabrook, so I decided to custom print one. I know that I did do custom printing with the advent calendar last year for Stone Ocean, mainly because, um, I was just, I couldn't find anything good for Anasui or Jolene. Um, and basically I just reserved the custom printed torsos for, um, characters who I think need it the most, so I think there's like one or two more figures in the series who had a custom torso. So yeah. Anyway, he has a brand new hair hat combo, and for accessories he has two fists to represent soft and wet, and also a soap bubble. Next up we have Yasuho, who's also one of my favourites of the series. She has a brand new skirt piece um, to have all those flowers on it, and for accessories she only really needs one, and that's her phone, and on it um, she has Paisley Park, which is actually a really uh, cool piece from Hidden Side. Um, it was just like a normal phone with like a red ghost on it, but it fit basically perfectly. Now I'm not that good at pronouncing Japanese names, so... Um, Rai Mamzuku. I'm just gonna call him Rai for the rest of this part. Anyway... Something that really annoys me with Mecha Brooks is that there's literally a perfect hair hat combo piece for him that exists. It's from Bofa from The Hobbit, but it wasn't on Mecha Brooks, so I had to use this generic Parker piece, which, yeah, really bothers me. Anyway, for accessories, we have the whip piece and flesh to represent Doggy Style, which is his body unraveling into wires or strings. And he also has the Rokakaka, which, oh sorry, Lokakaka, sorry, got the um, Romanized name mixed up. Anyway, 
It's a recolor of the mace piece from series 15 in Coral, and I think that works out really well. Okay, now why did I include Joshu in this series, or Joshu, however you pronounce it? Well, he had a role in the final battle, so I think he deserved a spot, even though I think Norisuke would have been more important. Anyway, um, he has a brand new hair piece to represent that ugly ass haircut he has. And he also has um, the collar piece to represent his little bow. For accessories, he has two screws to represent his stand Nat King Cole, and he also has a $100 bill to represent the Milagro Man fight. And for another one of the Higashi Carters, we have Jobin. And I think he came out alright, honestly. He has the hood piece from the Lugo movie, and also the Commissioner Gordon hair piece in bright green. And for accessories, we have a new piece for a beetle, and also the Rakakaka plant with three more Rakakas on it. I keep getting it mixed up with the... Uh... <laughs> I keep getting Rokakaka and Rokakaka mixed up, I'm sorry. And finally, for the main antagonist of Jojolian, we have Toru, who I actually think came out alright, despite the fact I hate his colours. Like, Jesus Christ. Anyway, he has a brand new hair piece to represent that afro. And for accessories, he has a phone to, uh, so he can play music on it, and, uh, hold on, I need to look up the name of this. Okay, it's, uh, Lokakaka6251. There we go. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty happy with how it came out, honestly. Now, kicking things off with the JoJo Lands, at number 13, we have Jodio. And I was gonna give him the hood piece, but I also gave him custom printed torso, and I didn't really line them up properly, so... I just have his hood on, and it kind of saves me from trying to um, work out how to do the hair. So, yeah, also a uh, shout out to Gundam for uh, recoloring the hair for me, because uh, I did not know how to use Pixar at the time. <laughs> anyway, I couldn't really think of any accessories, because November Rain would be way too big, so I just gave him the Lava Rock which um, so far is really important in Jojo Lands. Next up we have Dragona, Jodio's sibling. Now we still don't know if this is actually a dude or a transgender female, so I'm just going to use they them pronouns for them because um, it's not like specific to anything. So anyway, uh, for Dragona's accessories, they have smooth operators, which um, is a colour I had to choose, and driver's license. They also have a crown of uh, flowers as well, which is a new um, combo piece. Next up we have Parko, and honestly I think him and Usagi look really weird in colour, I don't know. Um, and he wasn't even that clear to begin with, so some of these colour choices might be creative liberties, who knows. Anyway, Parko has a new hair hat combo piece, as well as for accessories, a sprite to represent the scene where they test the lava rock. And also one of the cats that they fight. I was thinking about including all three um, throughout each of the figures. To be honest, I probably should have. But yeah, to be honest, Parker is probably my least favorite of the series. From the one I'm least satisfied with to the one I'm well, one of the ones I'm most satisfied with actually is Usagi. And um, despite the fact I don't know how to feel about him in color, I actually am pretty happy with how he came out as a Lego figure. Um, there aren't really any new pieces, but um, his hat is a recolor of like that French hat. And for accessories, he has a hot dog um, to represent when he's first introduced to the gang. And he also has the Mate Kudasai and a security camera as well, which of course the Mate Kudasai is another color I had to choose. I think red fits well considering King Crimson is the music reference. And you know, back in um, series 2 I think it was, I included like that random kid from Diamond is Unbreakable. And looking back, I don't even know why I included him, considering Rohan would have been a bajillion times more important, but hey, now I can include him in this series. And yeah, his colours are based on the ones from uh, that Ultra, Dun <laughs> Ultra Jump cover. Um, he's using the Monkey Kid here bandana combo piece, and for accessories he has Lime Rope to represent that cover, and for some reason I tried to include like a 2x2 tile of Pink Dark Boy, but for some reason the colours were inverted, I don't know what happened there. Now of course we don't have a main antagonist for Jojo Lands yet, considering we're only 9 chapters in, but I don't know, I'm kinda suspicious of uh, Meryl May Kui, I mean she's only in one chapter so far, we know nothing about her, and from what we have seen of her, she's basically just ordered, um, you know, the main characters to steal the diamond, so yeah, yeah, yeah she, she, I'm kinda suspicious of her. Anyway. 
She's reusing the dress piece that was um, used for uh, that one character from Harry Potter. The name's escaping me. I'll have a picture up. Of her. I'll put a picture of her up on screen. Um, because she is very tall, and um, for accessories she has a handbag and the diamond itself. And I also decided to um, give her a new hair piece to represent um. What hair? What would you call that? It's like a bun, but also. A Ponytail? I don't know. I'll just call it like a um, very upright ponytail. And that's about it for the series. Overall, I um, think I actually um, did pretty well considering like, you know, we don't have like an anime to reference the colours on. And I mean, of course, the, the colours in the manga are definitely subject to change, especially for the Jojo lands. But yeah, I think, um, yeah, I think this is a pretty decent series. It's not my favourite. Favorite? I think probably my favorite JoJo series is still the first one I did. But still, I think this is pretty solid, and um, later down the line, I guess I couldn't make custom JoJo sets. I was gonna do a um, advent calendar for Diamond is Unbreakable, but I completely forgot about that, and I think it's a bit too late to do that now. Unless I like absolutely want to speed run it. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you later. Goodbye.